And welcome to the LMS show. Thank you so much for coming in, Mr. Drakeford. And thank you, Lenny, for your show and Sisters of Tempest Bookstore. Okay, so please tell us a little bit about you and then we're going to get right into your book. Okay, well, I, right now I'm getting ready to get my degree in um, psychology. Mm -hmm. I started writing at a very young age because, you know, through the life experiences I've explained, I was more of an introvert to myself. So I wrote a lot to keep myself occupied. And as I got over, I, I've always been an avid reader. I started reading it at the age of three in a book club. I was enrolled in a book club, that's my mother. And I always wanted to read everything. Mm -hmm. So I started reading about different subjects. And I was interested in cowboys. I've always had a name of cowboy because when I went to Puerto Rico at the age of six, the first cowboy I saw was John Wayne. I didn't understand what he was saying, but I just knew he was on a horse and it looked interesting. And as I got more, as I got older, I started learning how history disguises the truth. So that made me dig even more. I'm like, once you show me something, I'm gonna keep going and keep digging. I think I am, uh, sometimes I have a problem with being too, too much of a go-getter. You know what I'm saying? I don't stop going. Once I learn something, I got to find some more. I want to just dissect everything. Okay, awesome, awesome. So tell us, what's the title of your book? The book is called Black, Wild, and Untamed. Okay. It's a fiction book, but it has true meaning in it. There's a lot of things that are actually happen, like the Civil War, the reason behind the Civil War, which is why we're here today to talk about the Buffalo Soldier. Right. Because the Buffalo Soldier was an integral part of us when it the northern, not us, but the northern women in the Civil War. Okay, so what exactly is a Buffalo Soldier? A Buffalo Soldier basically was a name that was given by the Indians because the blacks were because of our dark skin color mm. and because of the fact that they weren't afraid and like Buffalo, they roamed. See, black then, blacks, we never really had a home of our own. We had to keep going from wherever we were. If you left a plantation, you got away. Most likely you had to live with the Indians. Mm -hmm. So that was a nickname that was called the Black Buffalo Soldiers. Okay. You know, and to think about they, they're all derivatives of the black cowboys like um have you ever heard of this lady that calamity jane yes okay calamity jane is one that they always black about all oh, this woman was all oh, this she was this they don't want to tell you about stage coach mary who was stage coach mary stage Mary was an african-american woman big bone they used to get drunk and knock men out <laughs> and she was like that's why they call it and she robbed stage coach and that's what she did and she would boast. She would get drunk. Sit up. The magic woman in the wild was sitting there getting drunk, telling other men that she's going to knock them out and would bet them. And nobody wanted to mess with her. After a few first fights, nobody really wanted to mess They knew she was serious. Wow. Okay, that is a strong black woman. <laughs> yeah, they're very strong. You know, but it's all, you know, I think in our culture, we've always seem to ignore certain things that made her who we are today. And right now, with the soldiers and everything, that's what it is. I was in the military myself. Mm -hmm. And so, everything that we've done, it always came, there was others that set the path for us, there was others that set the way for us. You know what I'm saying? The Django is, that's what, when Kitten Tarantino made Django, that's what he was born on, the Black Buffalo Soldier and the Black Cowboys that were present in the West, which the West will still try to deny. Really? Okay, so what other hidden gems have you found out in your research of your book? Well, the, the African Americans, we were really the ones who did all the wrestling. Because what happened was, Okay, let me back it up. The first thing, we were good wrestlers. We were also good bronco riders. To, to get there and tie a bull down is not easy. So, you didn't think that the masters would send the slaves? I'm sending themselves or their family members to do it. Of course. They would send the slaves to do it. And the slaves, because they knew they had to do it, they started getting to the point where they got good at it. And that's what that's who that's where the original that's how some of these famous come they were taught by a black it was send somebody black to do it like Roy Rogers so forth. They learn from black people. Yeah. Now another thing the myth is that Lincoln freed the slaves, quote unquote, for the for the war. Mm -hmm. That's a myth. He didn't want to free the slaves. He had no choice because he was losing so many because the Confederate soldiers they were real, you know, they were very aggressive. And when they caught their prisoners, they should try to chop their hair off. So he needed somebody that wasn't intimidating. Mm -hmm. So why not give people that want to fight for their freedom anyway? They didn't like the South, so that's why. And so this is how we got all so, so the cowboys, the buff, the black cowboys, the buffalo soldiers, it's all wrapped into one. Just like today we have these here, like the CDM, they all the businesses of black cowboys anyway, because they all fought for, you know, they all fought for something, they stood for something. Unlike the day when we have blacks that are killing each other over senselessness. Right, things that don't even have anything to do with them. Uh, it's, you know, it's a shame, and you know, I try to empower the youth 
But you know, right now, if it's not digital or it's not on the phone, they don't want to look at it. Mm -hmm. But you know, my job is to try to teach people much. I try to get them all to the book. Okay. <coughs> all right, so we're going to look forward to that release of your book and be able to uh, find more unsung heroes and get more into our history about you know empowering black people our youth i was actually thinking about that this morning uh, especially when it comes to you know gang violence that you know they're not exposed to anything other than their neighborhood so we gotta you know go back to our history where we came from get that pride back so that way we can empower ourselves and to look for greater and bigger things and be bigger than what we just see in front of us so i really appreciate you and we're going to turn it right back to, to Lenny and the rest of the show. Thank you so much. All right, give it up. <laughs> wow, that, that was a nice time. You enjoyed the interview with Cassandra? Oh, I did, Mr. Matthews. I really did. And the LMS show was making me a day. And you know that about the Cowboys and, you know, you know we, we, this is like sometimes we don't feel like, feel like we, we don't contribute to nothing. Well, you know, it's the, they don't want you to think that you contribute. The, way, the best way to keep us ignorant is that they, if we don't read, we don't study ourselves. They, if you listen to everything they put in the history books, you're going to be as dumb as them. You see what's going on right now, like a little bit going there, but we don't want to get into that. Yeah. We're not going to get into that, but we see what's going on now. And our youth right now, they have no pride. And I, you know, I'm a very strong advocate for teaching your child at home. I believe that when they took out the Spare the rod, spoil the child. He tells you that in the Bible. Once they stop doing that, that our children just went a month. They ran with it. Well, I don't want to sound like this. I don't want to sound like my conservative friends or nobody like that. But also, too, when you have these so-called folks who sit back here and say, oh, well, you don't need that, you know, they, they want to create a job for themselves. <laughs> 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 that's what they're at, you know. Um, but we, it, 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 starts in, it, it starts in the home. But sometimes, some people don't have that kind of background. You know, to, for that to start in the You know, it also starts our community because it takes a community to reach out. I remember when I was young, there was this old gentleman named Mr. Boom. He was a Tuskegee Airman. I didn't find out until after he was dead. He died. And I knew not to let Mr. Boom catch me doing anything wrong. I knew better. And I was, and every time he was coming out about, we like, there go Mr. Boom. We straighten up. And right now in our communities, no one is trying to shepherd you. The kids, the parents, if you try to chest that child, they tell you what you're doing talking to my child. But you know, also too, we have, which is sad, we have children, we have children, and I'm not talking about this, children raising children. Exactly. It's not about that, you know, exactly. I see that, you know, because they have, you know, they don't have too much manners. Well, unfortunately, the kids don't have too much manners, then you're going to pay for that. You say, oh, well, that's, a, that's, that's their problem. Yeah, you're going to pay for it, one way or the other. Um, I like what you're doing. The book, in this book, you just it's still in, in, in stages, right? Well, it's in, the, it's in the final stages right now. Okay, so I, what I'm doing right now is like uh, certain things, with this new technology, the print was messed up, so I had to redo the print. And the print is almost finished. It should be, uh, hopefully, by the end of September. Okay, so we, you know, we, we, we'll bring you, you know, we'll, we'll bring you back on board and, 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 and uh, we'll, talk about, we'll talk about your book. All right, I appreciate it, Mr. As, as, let's give it up to Mr. Green for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Very good. And we're back. Cassandra, you mentioned to me about an organization. Tell us about this organization. Well, Staten Island is the Forgotten Borough. It's also <laughs> <laughs> of all the five boroughs, it is the smallest, but it's also culturally rich, which a lot of people don't know that. Um, recently become involved with the Sandy Ground Historical Society, okay. which is located on the south shore of Staten Island in Rossville. That's way down there, right? Oh, way down in the south. Literally the other side of Staten Island, just before you hit Jersey. No, wait a minute, on the other side of Staten there, right? Say it again. On the other side here, right? Yeah, um, it's uh, 1538 Woodrow Road, mm -hmm. the end of Staten Island. And what it is, is that it was the first free black community after slavery was abolished. So it's very exciting. There's a lot of rich history about um, how the community was established, about the uh, businesses that were owned. At one time, there was about over 200 black families that were in that community. And unfortunately, due to time and unforeseen circumstances and some other circumstances, the community has dwindled down. But we're still thriving, and we're still educating people about our history. How long have you been involved with this? About a year. Okay. Um, it's, it's been 
an eye opener. I am a native Staten Islander. And yes, yes, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was I just. Go see, I go to Staten Island see my doo wop shows. <laughs> they don't play in no other place no more. No, you know, go to Staten Island, you know. Right, yes, our St. Joe's Theater. It's really great that they've um, yes. they fixed that up. Yes. Um, but it's just been, it's, it's a wonderful nonprofit organization. Um, we just got our website back up. Um, we're looking for um, you know people to come out, take tours, you know, support us. Um, we've been educating the public, um, usually with quilting. Mm -hmm. That was something that was done um, by you know, you know, slaves back in that time. Um, we have one of our uh, freedom slaves where you can actually see you know the way how to find the underground railroad so that way you can find your way north to be able to escape. So there's a very interesting story behind that that you'll learn when you take one of the tours. You know, we would like to do it in the near future. Well, I got to make sure this is right. Uh, <laughs> we would like to uh, maybe do a show from out there. That would be fantastic. You would welcome that so much. Yeah, we have do a show from out there. I think that's so. I think it's so important. You know, you know about our heritage and everything. You know, yes. you know, you know, you know I, I go to Staten Island. You know, it's not just about the beach. You know, all this kind of stuff. You know, right. And 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 and. and, and, and you know, those were the days. <laughs> and I would leave it at that. <laughs> you know, um, I like what you're doing, you know. And as I say before, we talk more about it. And uh, well, if, if I can't bring the crew out there, I'll bring myself out there. Yes, please. We're actually going to be having a festival coming in August, August 18th. I stand the grand day, so when you look at the website, you'll get more information about it. So come on down, bring the family, friends. Okay, we did, be a lot of that, but you run it every year, right? It is every year. Um, usually it's in June, but this year we had to postpone it to August. Okay, but, but uh, we keep all the information on the website. Okay, all right. I'd like to thank you so much. I'd like to thank everyone for watching the LMS show, and um, well, we'll see you soon. Take it down. Hey! Welcome to the LMS show. My name is Eddie Matthews. Give us a big hand. Hey! Look at that sisters, everybody. Sisters, please. You know, I meet so many interesting, you know, book offices that come through sisters. You know, I'm not plugging sisters on there. That's the industry straight now. But I am, yes and no. But um, we, um, we a lot of poor people who write books. You know, everybody got a book in them. This particular topic um, is something that is suffered by a lot of people in America today. Um, stuttering, especially with young kids, and especially young kids go to school and, and you know you know I remember growing up, growing up you know growing up kids could be very 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 vicious. And sometimes that can hang on to you the rest of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for you to meet what Oliver speaks, and I'd like for you to meet the young lady. What's, what's your name, my, my friend? Kimberly. Say it out loud, it was that. Who me? Oh, Kimberly yes. Garman. I co authored When Oliver Speaks with my son, Sadiq Wicks. Give her a big hand, everybody. <laughs> now, with your son. Yes, with my son. How old was your son? My son is 16 now. 16? Yeah. What gave you an idea for this book? Um, it was him. Uh, we were on, well, my son is 16 years old. He is a person who stutters, and he stuttered for as long as he could speak. Um, at eight, he was bullied for his speech. And at nine, he created the nonprofit organization, Let Me Finish, with three L's and he advocates for young people who stutter. Um, and so on a train ride in the city, he leaned over to me at 14 and said, can we write a book? Oh. And, you know, I- No, that was a video game, right? No, 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 <laughs> can, you write a, can I write a book? You can do anything. Yes, you can. Well, what do you want to write this book about? I said, I want to write a little, I want to write a children's book about a brown boy who stutters because there are no brown children um, yeah, pro protagonists in yeah. stories and there isn't a book that talks about stuttering and so I want to write a book and so on the train I pulled out my phone 
and I started taking the notes in my phone, and by the time we got to Penn Station, we had a book. What? You had a book. We had a book. The, the, y'all had a book in you. Oh, we give her a, a big hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did he ever take like the experiences that how you know like when he gone through in school? Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, let me finish. Started as a Facebook page, and mm -hmm. so he would um, I would type for him because he was you know nine and kind of like a slow. He's a hunt and pecker. Um, but he would tell me about his day, and I would type about it, and um, he would let the Facebook world know like what it was like to be a person who stutters. And so if you were the waitress who finished his order, if you were the pizza delivery man who didn't, you know, well, why was the waitress in order? What, 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 what the waitress was in order? What happened there? Um, well, oftentimes when people, like when you're interacting with people who stutter, it seems quite natural, I guess, to finish the person's sentence. And so if you finished his sentences, he would talk about you. If you didn't let him finish, he would talk about you. If you hung up on him on the phone when he was trying to place an order, he would talk about you. What, 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 I'm a restaurant for you. Um, what, did, did the waiters rush him or what? Um, there are a number of things that people do. I mean, think about it. I mean, just think about it, I guess, no one wants to wait. No one, like the, I guess the level of patience that people have in today, or today for people in general, is kind of at an all time low. And so if my son is trying to order a pepperoni pizza, and, yeah. and he's trying to get out yeah. pepperoni because he's yeah. stuck on it yeah. and she interjects and says pepperoni mm -hmm. that's disrespectful because you don't do that to a person who's fluent yeah because sometimes you know like my son have a thing you know like sometimes I'll, I'll take to the restaurants and they have a thing called you know flipping tables because they won't flip that table to the next person oh 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 <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you know they sit back okay yeah, yeah, you get the menu Come around there, give me a. You all right? Du -du 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 -du. right? Here's a check and get out of here. That happened to me uh, at, at a place over in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, this and 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 Kilo. Well, maybe this guy's that name over there because why can't I get this around the free club? And they shut down. They shut the restaurant down. <laughs> Kick him to the curb too. Huh? Yeah, kick him, him to the curb too. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Go ahead, go, go, go back. No, but that, I mean, it's just, um, there are just, I guess, communication rules yeah. um, that people aren't familiar with um, when engaging with a person who's ever. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, being respectful and being courteous. Yeah. And oftentimes people aren't. Isn't that like a disability in a sense? Um, could you call it I mean, I guess you can yeah. call it a disability, but we've never, we've never treated it as oh. a disability. In fact, Sadiq just was like running an ad, so to speak, um, mm -hmm. and said that his stutter was his superpower. You know, and so what's yours? And oftentimes children ask him, you know, if if you could take your stutter away, would you? And you know, he's you know um, definitively no. Um, he would. You have a lot of famous people, you know, that that's and they admit in public that they stutter. Right. And I wouldn't be surprised. I mean. Stuttering is genetic, and so I am a person who stutters. Yeah. My uncle stuttered. Yes. Um, it's typically skips a generation. Yes. Um, and so I wouldn't be surprised if if the environment kind of allowed itself that those people, those famous people who are now fluent, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they had pockets of this fluency. Mm -hmm. Because as fluent as I am, I'm still a person who stutters. Yeah. And 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 so there are moments when I am disfluent. Take a look at this book here. It's a pretty good book. Pretty good book. Mm. Yeah, Giovanni said it's a book that indeed needed to be shared. Mm, it's a book that needs to be shared. Yeah.
this is back here. This is this is having your son right here. Thirteen years old. Look at that. You know, he's sixteen now, right? Mm -hmm. Now he's like sixteen. Sixteen. Now look at that young brother, brother doing, doing something for himself. Got a good mama to help him out. Well, and you are uh, you're a professional speaker too, right? That's what they say. Well, okay. And you hold a degree in mass communication from. Uh, uh, fair, uh, failing, uh, Dickinson, Fairly Dickinson. Dickinson. Mm -hmm. and when you're not, uh, you love know, reading, writing, and reading as many times as you can, and you and you appear regularly on guests, especially best on radio shows around the country. What radio show you've been on? Uh, man, I can't even think of. I don't even, we were in Princeton, we've been, um, college radio he's done. This is interesting, you know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at this book. Oliver, let me see, the one thing that Oliver doesn't enjoy is speaking. You know, sometimes you, you, you know, when you speak, you know, sometimes you get kind of nervous, you know, like I, I, I sometimes I'll call, you know, the professor here on the phone, and I'll tell them the day before, I told Corey, I said, you know, you know, I'm kind of nervous, and, you know, sometimes you don't know, you know, you know sometimes you, you, sometimes you, start, sometimes you're conscious of things, too, right? Mm -hmm. What do you mean conscious? I mean, I mean, like, you don't want to do almost the wrong thing. Well, no, I don't know that that has anything to do with a person who stutters. Their anxiety mostly comes from what the other, what the listener's perception of them speaking is. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they're nervous about what it is they have okay. to say. It's not that they don't know what they want to say. Um, they're more, like I said, their anxiety stems from the reaction of others. So if you break eye contact and now you signal to them in some way that what they have to say isn't important. How's your son doing with his, his non-profit organization? Oh, he's doing really well. Okay. Yeah, he's actually planning a book bag drive. Oh, okay. That's right, going back to school. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to give the book away, but I think folks should, and I'm not staying, buy them on the air. <laughs> so we said, we, you know, we, we, we want people to uh, read this book, especially the children's book. How old is the children? What, what, what age are they? Um, kindergarten to first, you could do it as a read aloud. Uh, second and second to fifth, they can. it's an independent read. Um, Funny story, uh, a little, my girlfriend's daughter, was. they took a picture of her reading the book and, and I asked if she read it because it's that like we, we put the stutter in the book. And so when kids read it, um, like they're reading the stutter. And so I, you know, I said, I see the picture, you know, was she reading it with the stutter? And they were like, yeah, like they, you know, she thought it was pretty cool. She never heard a person who stutters or had seen a stutter to be able to identify what one was. And so if nothing else, I mean, like your kids are being exposed to, you know, a topic that they may be unfamiliar with and through Oliver's eyes and experiences, you know, they're learning acceptance and, and tolerance for things much larger than speech at some point. I would like to thank you very much for joining me today on the LMS show. Also, too, you do other things too, right? Yeah, but we're not talking about we're that. Talk about, no, we're talking about another day. Another day. This is all about Oliver. All about Oliver. All about, all about Oliver. Oliver. <laughs> right here. We thank you so much. So you want to tell them where they can get the book? Sure. Well, we, we, we can't. Oh, we, we can't, can't we, do that? No, not because it's on the public access channel. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, search yeah. for it. Search for it. That's what that is. Yeah, that's, there that's, you go. That's the best way. Search for search it. For and it. you will find and it. And you will find See, it. See, and you shall find it. Right. And okay. if you spin around and look, you might find it here. Well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Seek and you shall find it. Right. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And your name, please. Kimberly Garvin. Kimberly Garvin, everybody. And we'll be right back and take it down. Yeah.